Greetings, friends. I'm Pastor Dale Peterson, Senior Pastor at Faith Lutheran in Waconia, coming to you today from our fireside room at Faith Lutheran. Behind me is a picture by Brian Jensen, commissioned by one of our members, Don Check, in honor of his wife, Jan Check, who passed away several years ago now, and it's a beautiful picture. So I invite you, if it's helpful to you, to find a place in this serene setting to give your focus. Maybe it's on our church building, the sailboat, water tower, maybe the farm in the background, whatever it might be. Or if you're like me, you may just want to close your eyes for much of the time. In these sessions, I do close my eyes and that helps me to listen to the Spirit. This is a time we do call attentive restfulness, and so we rest. I invite you to rest, to let your body sink into the chair or the couch or whatever is comfortable for you. I know some people prefer to lie down and just to listen. Let my voice be background, not that it would jerk you around or be uh, part of the distraction, but something just in the background to guide your time of spiritual awareness, of guided meditation, of restful attentiveness. And so I invite you to, to rest. And we begin with deep breathing. Studies show that deep breathing helps us to rest, relax. It reduces stress, calms anxieties, helps us to listen better, to think more clearly. And as we breathe, taking those deep, full breaths, Letting our thoughts go from our mind to our heart. As we move from concentration to contemplation. Time to rest and listen to God's voice. Believing that the Holy Spirit continually speaks to us. And so if we're attentive, take time to listen we believe God speaks. The Holy Spirit speaks to us and sometimes nudges, sometimes pushes, always informs. So rest, get comfortable, let your body sink, see if you can feel your weight being supported. Know that God holds you in the palm of God's hand. That Jesus looks upon you with eyes of compassion and says to you, I love you, I accept you as you are, I understand you, I forgive you, I promise to walk with you. And rest. One of our helpful rituals is to confess our sins and hear absolution. Part of our Lutheran liturgy says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I invite you, dear brothers and sisters, to take a moment of silent confession, to bring before God those things you've done you wish you hadn't, those things you haven't you wish you had. Words said you can't take back. This could be little things, it could be big things, things that interfere with your relationship with yourself, 
with other people and with God. And so invite us into a time of silent confession. So we can be honest before God with our shortcomings. So confess to God whatever is on your heart, whatever the Spirit brings to mind, you need to confess. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I remind you, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. Always opportunity for fresh start. Jesus loves you, looks upon you with eyes of compassion. Open arms, Jesus says, come to me all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. This time we call Lectio Divina, or Divine Readings. Today I read from John chapter 8, and it's a story of Jesus and the woman caught in adultery, of forgiveness, of starting over. So I invite you again to, to rest, to be open, to let this story be a background to your openness to the Holy Spirit moving in your heart and in your mind and your soul. As so we listen to John chapter 8, let the words come in. I'll read it through three times as is our practice. The first time through, to just get the big picture. Uh, this is kind of what the full story is about. And then the second reading, See if there's something that just hits you in a particular way today. Just seems to jar something in you. Seems to move you. And the third time through, whatever that is that moved you, that seems to stick, just ruminate on that. Reflect on that. Think about why that is. And come back to that in the next couple of days to just think about, knowing that the Holy Spirit brought that to you to think about, to dwell on, and maybe to move you to some kind of action. So I'll hear the story. John 8. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, making her stand before all of them. They said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses, now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test Jesus so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, Jesus straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, 
and from now on, do not sin again. Jesus, the word become flesh, grace upon grace upon grace. The woman could rightfully have been stoned. It's in the law of Moses. It's part of their tradition and culture. It could have happened. There's lots of laws like that, that Jesus didn't follow, that we no longer follow, as we find passion and grace and context. And so Jesus could have stuck with the letter of the law like we can many times. Sometimes the law does not allow for grace. And so Jesus comes up with a great statement. Let the one who is without sin. If you've never sinned, you cast the first stone. Interestingly, they walked away, one by one, beginning with the elders, beginning with those that had some life experience, beginning with those that had sinned the most, beginning with those who heard the truth of Jesus' words, who maybe heard the grace and the compassion who were caught in their scheme. And so Jesus doesn't condemn them either. He just says, let the one without sin cast the first stone. And they walked away. It's often pointed out that it takes two to commit adultery. And where was the man that participated May have instigated, we don't know. But he's not in the scene. And so Jesus looks at this woman into her heart, and her life, into her soul. He says, Where are they that would condemn you? Is there no one left to condemn you? And she says, No. No one, sir. Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go your way. From now on, do not sin again. Jesus talks about sin and changing our ways. When he says, go and, and sin no more, let's go and lead a new life. Go and make new choices. Go fresh. Go with strength. Go and be different. I'm so glad Jesus looks at you and looks at me and says, is there no one to condemn you? No one, sir. And Jesus says, neither do I. Go on your way and sin no more. Earlier we had a time of confession And for some of us, it was confessed things we'd really like to stop and do no more. Maybe it's things others have pointed out in us that are shortcomings. Maybe it's just things we know in our own heart, in our own soul, that we really want to change. Could be actions, could be thoughts, could be words. Could be how we've treated other people, whatever it is. Jesus longs to forgive and receive and give us power for a new start, for a fresh start. It's like this woman, chance to live life differently. And also for those that condemned her. You know, for some of us, we might be the judgmental ones. We might be wanting to hold others to the rules, to the laws, to the letter of the law. We want to be the judge. We want to be the one that brings somebody else before God and says, here, do something with them. 
interestingly, Jesus lets them go. And I wonder if their hearts were changed after their encounter with Jesus. Maybe to be less judgmental, more understanding, more forgiving, more accepting, practicing as we try to practice that faith, inclusive grace, contagious love. Oh, God, help us. We need it today. Our world needs it. Our community needs it. I need, you need, our families do. This kind of love that comes from God, with it, with the Holy Spirit, strength and courage and hope, peace, fresh start. So listen again to the story. Listen to the story and maybe ask, where's God in the story? Where am I in the story? Where are you in the story? Good questions to ask for Bible stories. Where's God in the story? Where am I in the story? Good question. Now what? So rest and breathe and listen. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to see him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And making her stand before all of them, they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test Jesus, so they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, Jesus straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Once again, Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Women, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. They gathered around Jesus, as was the custom. The teacher sat down and the rest stood around. And they brought the woman to him, reminded Jesus of the rules. She should be stoned. And Jesus bends down on the ground and starts writing him on the ground in the dust, almost as if he's, he's doodling or jotting a few notes, thinking. Then the great statement, let anyone among you without sin be the first to throw a stone. And he bends down and starts to write again. Jesus won't be caught in their tricks. And so he brings grace and grace fresh start. The same for the woman caught in adultery is the same for us, you and I, caught in our sin. 
Jesus forgives. I start and go and live differently. I'll read through a last time and just let the story sit with you at the end, leaving you today in silence and even as the video ends, if you just want to turn it off and remain in a reflective state just to have more silence if that's available to you. I encourage you to do that. So we'll just end in silence today. As you hear the story the third time, again, see what it is that moves you, touches your heart. Let it, that touch stay there. Just let it sit on your heart. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and Jesus sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test Jesus so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept questioning him, Jesus straightened up and said to them, let any one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on do not sin again. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Peace be with you. <laughs>